Three reasons why you may be frustrated in your relationship and marriage. Three reasons why you may be you frustrated, may be frustrated in, in your relationship. relationship and marriage. The first is maybe you think it was God that spoke, but it was your flesh. Mm. Maybe you think it was God that spoke, but it was your flesh. I don't know if you've, if you've I'm sure some of you have experienced this, or quite a number of persons have experienced it, that, you know, when you have emotions for someone, and sometimes you are not even sure if that's the person you are to be in a relationship with. But because your emotions are, emotions can be very loud. Mm. You know when those cool shivers go down your spine, you know, and um, just the thought of his name alone, you can't understand how you really feel inside. Lagos, you want to tell me you've not been there? You yeah, better be real this evening. You know that thing that when you are even turning the pages of your Bible, you are seeing his name there. Mm. <laughs> when you see thou art. It's not thou you are seeing, it's Benjamin. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you understand. It's like you are reading the Bible, but you are not reading it. Mm. So sometimes you can actually be so much emotionally yoked with someone that you feel is God speaking, whereas it's your emotions. That's true. And you know, one of the mistakes I've realized that many persons make is, is at the point of relationship, choosing a spouse that they begin to hear God. Mm. They want to hear God. You did not hear God at seemingly significant or minor, let me use the word minor, minor situations in your life. But when it comes to relationship, the choice of a spouse, you now want to hear God. Yeah. And it doesn't work that way. And that's why many of the time, that's what brings the confusion. Mm. So when you're in the relationship, you get frustrated like, did I actually hear God? And the truth is, you didn't hear God, it was your emotions. Mm. So this is where we have to be careful. You did not hear God when you are about to board that Uber. You didn't hear God when you are about choosing your course to study in school. The things we casualize many of the times and we forget that our life has to be governed by the Holy Spirit. Every yeah. stage, not only in relationship. So when you did not hear God, because you, you can't just get used to someone in one day. You can't get used to someone only in the journey of choosing a spouse. What happened to the other journey of your life? So when you get to that point, how do you, how is it possible? Because it's intimacy with him that makes you understand his voice. So when you're not close to someone, how do you even recognize the person's voice? It's not possible. Mm. So many of the times you get into relationship and your emotions begin to speak to you, not the Holy Spirit. And when people come for counseling like this, they come and say, ah, you know what, I, I don't know. And you're like, have you heard God say, I, 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 I think so. Because you begin to think you have heard him, but not to know that you have heard him. Because you are not sure. So it's very important that you are able to differentiate these things. And no, this is not just about, you don't always get frustrated, only about not being sure if it's God you heard. But also, you can also dream. You know, people. some people are dreamers. Yeah. We have Josephines and Joseph. Some people dream a lot. Like you can just be in a dream and you see somebody wearing white and you say, wow, that's your spouse. It, it was like two weeks to my marriage. Uh -huh. um, I had a friend, a girl, who sent me, then Blackberry was raining. So we usually chat through Blackberry and she sent me a message and she was describing the dream that she had and how that um, she saw herself wearing a wedding gown. Oh yeah, and I remember. That, um, <laughs> And that she saw me wearing a suit and we came together and there was a pastor that joined us two weeks to my marriage and she had seen the card you know and so i asked her i said why are you sending me this and she responded like are you sure you are not making a mistake holy ghost fire <laughs> because i am the one for you and she told me she said when god speak when god speaks there is nothing that can be done i looked at the lady i said what are you saying he said oh he's you are my husband. Two weeks to my marriage, I started laughing. A lot of ladies are in that confusion. Mm -hmm. If we give my crown now to a lot of you, you have had dreams. You have had dreams for a brother in church. Yeah, if you've forgotten one. Re Revelation. Mm -hmm. 
I remember what is it when a guest minister yes. was about coming to our city, a pop like if I call yes. his name, you know him. He, he got married, the guest minister, the pastor got married last year. Yes. You know, but before he got married, he was coming to my city and I was hosting. And this pretty lady came, I mean fire brand lady. Because I'm gonna deal with this issue today. Fire brand lady. She's not a member of my church. She just came and said, I heard this man of God is coming to town. This apostle. I say, Yes, he's coming. He said he said okay uh, that uh, can i see you for a personal counsel because i need you to take me to him i said why should i take you to him he said pastor you don't understand i had a dream two dreams one was in february and one was in april the one in february i saw this man he wore a white suit and i wore a wedding gown and a pastor joined us I said, what of the one in April? He said, the one in April, myself and this man of God, we carried babies. We carried babies. He said, I can swear that this man is my wife and my husband. So I called the pastor. I said, oh boy. I said, they come beneath. You don't get a wife for beneath. <laughs> People want to marry you. He now told me, he said, oh, he, he said, anywhere I go, people are seeing vision for me. They are seeing vision for me. Amen? See, the truth is that your emotion can be at play. And that is why, let me read a scripture for you so that you know how to deal with issues like this, so that you will not be frustrated, especially those of you that are dreamers. You see prophecy a lot. So that you will not make mistake. And all of a sudden, this girl, this girl was so sure. She came for the program, everything. Tried to assess the man of two seed. Laid down at the apostle's feet. Thinking that the apostle will see her. The apostle seed did not see her. Three, three months after, the, the man of God brought out his uh, wedding, card. wedding card. I personally transferred it to the girl through WhatsApp. I forwarded it. So that she will see it and she was mad and what i told her is what i want to tell a lot of us in only prophecy so that you will not be frustrated first Corinthians chapter 14 verse 29 first Corinthians chapter 14 verse 29 the bible said let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. This was the characteristics of the, the church, the early church, which is not our characteristics now. Especially for us who are young people who see, who see revelations more than our pastors. Amen? I hope that you know that your pastor is subject to an authority. That there's a level of revelation I will get I know my spiritual father will call him for help. But we have a generation who see prophecy and they, they don't question anything. They go to Facebook immediately and they start writing Rema. They are not under authority. Check, ask your pastor. He has somebody he submits to. When, when the chiefs are down, he has who to run to. But you will see prophecy. You are an authority. I saw him. He's my wife. I will marry him. That's why you keep getting every year you see dream. Every year. You have, you have seen dream of a sister in choir. You have seen instrumentalist. You have seen usher. Everybody in church, you keep dreaming. Why? Because you do not understand how prophecies was dealt with in the early church. When prophecies was given, it was subjected to judgment. True, true. Because they understand that the extent is that a prophet can speak from the flesh every prophet born prophet that you know of True. you know some of you you call prophet oracle leave oracle not see sometimes oracle phase in the life of a prophet True. True. and that is why matured prophet i'm even talking about our pastors as well too if you truly want to prophesy you can tell your members and say you see this instruction i'm giving to you is from my judgment not every time god said god said God said. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. So, take your prophecy. There are spiritual authorities in your church. Go and meet them. 
Sir, I don't know why I'm always dreaming of Ikechi. I'm always seeing Ikechi. Is God saying something? You need help. Then your spiritual authority will counsel you on how to go about it. Don't be an authority in mistakes. True. And you keep going through circles. True. And also, when you have a dream, never use human tool to interpret a spiritual tool. True. You cannot... Dream, dream is a spirit thing. You cannot afford to use your human sense to interpret a dream. Because it can mean anything. I remember one time, I, I woke up one morning and I dreamt. I saw myself having a basket of bananas. And then somehow my mom happened to be in my house that period. And I told her, I said, ah, I just had a dream. I saw myself with banana basket. My mom said, ah, you soon get pregnant. <laughs> and I said, ah, she said, banana means children. Mm. Even the other time I saw my rain falling, my mother said, it's blessing. Mm. You know, you, 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 you see, you can, you, they, they can be, you can, you can wrongly interpret a dream. True. Because you're trying to use your human sense. God might just be saying something else. And that's why when you have a dream, leave the dream and talk to your maker. Mm. Don't concentrate on the dream. Concentrate yeah. on who has given you the dream. Yes. It's very actually when the dream wasn't better from your emotions. Like every one of us have different ways God speaks to us. Like for me, one of the ways God speaks to me is through dreams. Actually, when I'm not thinking about the thing, it's different. So if you have a dream. Especially when you're not thinking about it. It's not, about, it's, not, it's not a dream that was better from your emotions. You sleep and you have a dream. Please, I beg you, don't be so quick to know the meaning of the dream. Get close to God because sometimes clarity is not revealed then, now, nah, at that point. It takes time. It may not be something he wants to reveal to you at that point. But as you progress with your relationship with him, the closer you will get to understanding the meaning of the dream. Yeah. So it's very important. Then also... When you have a revelation that God said this person is yours, please, there's a difference between having an information about someone and, and have knowing the time for the fulfillment of the revelation. That's true. So, when the woman perceived that this was a man of God, she didn't jump to go meet him. She yeah. went to meet her husband. True. There was a process. Oh, yeah. She didn't also end in just meeting her husband. They went together to prepare an upper room yes. for the man's visitation. Mm. So, when you hear a revelation, when you have a revelation, understand if it's the right season, mm. the right time yeah. for the fulfillment. True. So, God can say this person is your wife or this person is your spouse. But is it the right time to go approach the person? Is it the right time to say yes to the person? It's very important so that you don't mix seasons. Amen. And then also, coming back to this point too, sometimes it's not about the revelation you did not hear that makes your relationship or marriage frustrating. You can actually have a revelation about your spouse, your present husband, present wife. But you see, I have realized, we have realized in almost 10 years in marriage that it's revelation does not guarantee the success of a marriage. True. It's not, does it end in just revelation? God can reveal a particular person, but he won't come down to make the marriage work. Yeah. No wonder scripture says in Proverbs 4 verse 7, it says wisdom is the principal thing. Principal means the most important. So revelation is not as important as wisdom. What do I mean? Whilst revelation is important, what is most important is wisdom. Because if God reveals, if you have a revelation but don't have the wisdom to work out what has been revealed to you, you become frustrated. Mm. So, choosing the right spouse, marriage, success of a marriage doesn't just end in choosing right. It also ends in living right. Yeah. Choosing right is the beginning, but mm. the continuation for progress is living right. Yeah. So, there are principles, there are right principles that makes marriage work. Wisdom is the principal thing. So, the presence of revelation is not the absence of imperfection. So, even when God reveals a spouse to you, have you identified the person's strengths? Have you identified the person's weakness? True. How do I deal with the person's strength? And how do I deal with the person's weakness? Mm. Because the presence of revelation is not the absence of imperfection. So even if God reveals, doesn't mean the person is perfect. Yeah. So you need wisdom. And no wonder scripture says in Proverbs 24 verse 3, if I'm not mistaken. It says, it didn't just stop in, stop in wisdom. It says it takes wisdom to build a house. Mm. But in all your wisdom, get understanding. understanding. So in other words, even wisdom is given to you, you need understanding you need to know to how to apply it. Do you understand? So, mm. 
wisdom is needed to build a house but it takes so even in the wisdom you need to know when the where and the, and the how hour. to comprehend what has been given to you in the application praise god practical story one of my sons in church god now told him that <coughs> one guy in church is his wife. wife and this guy is firebrand you see this boy he has god though but he's very unserious very uns he will come late he will dress anyhow he will live his life anyhow you god was waiting for him god was waiting for him so he was always misbehaving and now god now told him that he now came <laughs> <laughs> and I can say, that is my wife that is my wife. i told her I said, he can't walk this lady that you are going to meet eh she's a firebrand your own seriousness has disqualified you so is it possible that god spoke it could be possible but your principles can abort the prophecy mm, true 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 very true the principles you are not living can abort the prophecy mm, true some of you are living careless life around your prophecy mm, true, and your true. prophecy is there waiting for you even if you approach your prophecy your prophecy will say no mm. that's why a lot of us no not us are married <laughs> a lot of you will end up marrying your girlfriend and dating your husband mm. because you are not living the right principles true he, he, the, the, the lady now said give me three months let me pray about it mm. i tell you for that three months this boy became serious in church <laughs> became very serious he comes to church before everybody is the last to go to church even if i'm preaching he's not making sense. say right go pastor <laughs> yes lord he, resp he started connect meetings started became serious for the lord because he needed yes but it was too late hmm. because the lady has known who he is already yeah when prophecies come start leaving the principles hmm. because you don't know when it will meet you hmm. am i talking to somebody True. you don't know when it will meet you don't abort your prophecies hmm. because you are not living the principles you see and this is very deep actually because many people want to choose a life partner without intentionally choosing a lifestyle for themselves hmm. and you forget that it's actually your lifestyle that begets the life partner true so you're not trying to jump on choosing a life partner or living with a life partner you want to get serious now because you're looking for a yes <laughs> but where has the lifestyle been? been all this while praise god Number two, we are on three reasons why you may be frustrated in relationship. Number two, maybe you talk too, too much, much to the wrong people. people. <laughs> maybe you talk too much to the wrong people. people. Matthew 26 verse 36 to 38. Hmm. Matthew 26 verse 36 to 38 then jesus came with them to a place called gethsemane and said to his disciples sit here while i go and pray over there and he took with him peter and the two sons of zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed then he said to them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death stay here and watch with me you see many of the times people are vulnerable to the wrong people you you disclose information to the wrong set of people jesus had 12 disciples but he didn't carry the 12 to get he didn't carry the 12 to the to the inner court of gethsemane he took the disciples yes but when he came to the point of vulnerability when they to release to surrender his distress to surrender how he was feeling he talked to three persons mm. peter and the sons of zebedee who are you disclosing the depths of your marriage to and let me tell you something not everyone who preaches on the pulpit on the altar is deep for marriage counseling mm. 
Now, the person is a pastor doesn't mean he has the right information to give to you. I was telling someone, I said, there are, there are um, two, two um, C and C. Counselor and counselor starts with C. C-A-N-C-E-L-O-R-O. C-O-U-N-S-E-L-R-O. They are both the same word, but they don't mean the same thing. Yeah. A counselor can ruin your marriage. A counselor can counsel. But counselor. a counselor advises. But who are you meeting? Because not every mentor is grounded for relationship and marriage. Yeah. So you can have a mentor who is deep in business, but may not be deep in family life. So it's very important. So who are you disclosing the depth? The other nine disciples, this is my interpretation of what I got from scripture, may not have understood the cup Jesus was about to carry. May not have understood the volume. May not have seen him as, hey, Messiah, why are you being distressed? He took a Peter. He took the three of them to have an understanding. Even with the three self, he got to a point they even slept. <laughs> Do you understand? So, it's very important who you are disclosing information to. Social media is not a place to seek or cancel. So many of you run on social media too much. On your on, WhatsApp status. On your WhatsApp status. People know your problem. People, I am I'm depressed. I'm telling you. You just put it there. I am depressed. Your depression is not for the world. Is it, I am depressed. Is it so bad that you have trusted your status more than status of a friend around? I because need somebody to talk, talk to me to now on status. your status. When I see it, it's funny to me. I'm serious. I'm like, no matter how introverted you are, is it not possible that you can actually perceive or design someone who can actually, who can actually talk to you? Who and is your three? Who is your three? You cannot be vulnerable to everybody. Can't. Who is awake now? Let's talk. Yes. Amen. Who is your tree? You should not be talking to everybody. And I noticed that when Jesus left, he, he told this. I said, "Sit here, while I go." He took, <laughs> he took the tree and he went. And guess what? He never cared how those other people felt. Mm. He never cared whether they would complain, whether they were beefy. Him. You know, it's possible. For them to be beefy and say why is it that he's always taking three he never cared mm. your problem is that you care too much about how people feel about you mm. you want to be accepted by everybody mm. so you start talking to everybody people that should not follow jesus needed to be vulnerable look at the statements jesus was saying there jesus that they saw performing miracle jesus that they saw raising the dead jesus now is saying my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Look at the confession Jesus is saying. A man of faith. Mm. Because it's not everybody that can take your vulnerability. True, true, true. Who are you confessing to? You just start relationship one week. You have told the guy, I committed abortion. I did this one. I did that one. Hey, they, they. You have opened your mouth, told the person, everybody everything about your life is the person your three am i talking to somebody is the person it's not everybody you talk to that they are your siblings and is your mom does it make them your three you start relationship the guy say let us play say i need to go and talk to my mom first is your mom your three i need to go and talk to my siblings first is your siblings your three your three are those people that can stand by you and they can support you. Come sun, come rain. Mm. Who is what? Your three. A lot of you, for you not to be frustrated in a relationship, you need to go and find your three. That they are nice doesn't make them your three. They are nice doesn't also make them wise. <laughs> True. Your, your, your mom can be so nice to the point that they will lead you astray. True. Your siblings are out of love. Oh God. Oh, he's don't pack out. Marry and stay inside my house. Don't pack out. Hey, oh, oh is well, 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 no, is there no food in your house? Hey, oh is you will you you will oh my mom cares about me. Before you know, you become a mommy's boy. Who is your three? Your three are those people that can push you, they can look at your face and tell you the truth. Who is your three? Do you know it just reminded me of a counseling experience I had 
the man, so um, I found out that the man was abusing his wife, and then I needed to know the roots, you know. And then when he came to my office, I asked, I said, what, what's, what's causing it? I mean, what happened? And then he asked to start, if he broke down, and said to me that he took an advice from a friend and his mom. He said, your wife is stubborn. Of course, he went to go and tell his friend that the wife is stubborn. So I said, you never beat her, now you make her. If you beat her, she'll get more sense. And that was how I started, because mm. you see, when you go to meet someone for counseling, it's not just the words they speak to you, they transmit a life to you. True. There's a transference that happens. Every word spoken is backed up by spirits. So when you go to meet someone, understand that in that meeting, there's a transference happening. Life is an atmospheric thing. It's not just what you wear or whatever. So anybody who is saying something to you, there's a spirit transferring it, that's transporting it. So by the time he went, when we diagnosed, found out that the man who was advising was, being, was beating his wife. Mm. So of course, he saw the legal ground to yeah. advise that one. Mm. That one, not knowing that his wife, the, the, the man was beating his wife, took the advice, and when he went home, in the isolated, you know, revelation goes louder when you're isolated. True. So <laughs> in his quiet environment, the revelation, the information, the counsel that the friend gave him began to speak. Mm. And so, before you knew it, he did not know when he began to transfer the spirit from his friend to his wife. So you need to be careful. We're saying this, this is very deep. A lot of marriages have failed from wrong advice wrong association, association. A, lot of, a lot of good relationships too have packed up from wrong advice so you need to be careful who you are listening to who you are also sharing information with it's very important if, if, if you see the life of Jonah Jonah entered into a ship with innocent people mm. those people almost died because of Jonah some of you are dead now dead you are, you are hot you are finding it difficult to forgive because of this person you put in your ship. Hmm. The person you were carrying. Throw this Jonah! Uh. <laughs> Throw your Jonah away! You are refused. It will change. It will change. Do you know that when the ship was shaking, Jonah was sleeping. They went to go and wake up. All you sleeper, wake up! The man causing problem is sleeping. You are the one. He's not calling me today. He's, you are thinking, oh, should I call him? You are the one having a dick. A dick. Your Jonah is sleeping. Jonah that you should throw away. Break that relationship and throw Jonah away so that you have peace. You are running at a scatter. Maybe it will change. Maybe it will. Some of you need to set boundaries and redefine your three. Start learning how to get enemies. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, the, the, the reason why some of you are not moving forward is because you don't want enemies. You are so nice. My mentor told me something. He said, Oiz, if you want to do ministry without having enemies, he said, go and sell ice cream. He said, because enemies will come. Are you listening? You have 5,000 friends on Facebook. How many likes do you get? How many likes? Sometimes four, sometimes ten. And everything. What are the rest doing? Most of their enemies. They are there looking at your progress. Waiting until they write ROIP. I used to know him. But that will not be your portion. They are watching. They are just watching. Watching to see that you will fail in life. Just watching. Oh, yeah. You must learn it to start accepting it that I should close door because I need to progress for my life. Not because I want to make somebody happy. Mm. So you keep getting frustrated in relationship if you do not know how to select your three sure. and close the door and master how to have enemies. Mm. The last point. Maybe you are not walking by faith. God has been saying, go pack your bags. Three reasons why you may not, why you may be frustrated in relationship. Maybe you are not walking by faith. Hmm. Genesis. And yes, God is saying to you, go pack your bags. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house 
to a land that I will show you. <laughs> Look at the instruction God usually gives to people, his own children. Have you seen it? He said, follow me. Pack your bag, follow me, and I will, what? Show you. So, walking with God is follow before he shows. Walking with the flesh is show before follow. I tell people it's very easy to get married. Go to Instagram. Go online. You will see shape. Is this shape you want to marry? You will see. Because the world will show you before they demand follow. You will see. Is it, uh, you, you can marry today. They are, they are there. We are close to Allen Avenue. You can marry today. You are wondering I know Allen Avenue. I'm regular in Lagos. <laughs> you can marry today if you are looking for who to marry. But if you walk by the flesh, the flesh says, see before you marry. And that is why a lot of us in the church, we are walking by the flesh. We want to see first. Who do you want to marry? You see, he has to be tall. He has to be dark. He has to be he has biceps. He has to have beer gangs. Amen? Because you are seen first before follow. But God was dealing with Abraham, the father of faith. He said, follow me and I will show you. True, and that's actually our experience, you know. The truth is, if I had to um, marry him, my first sin, I would never have married him. He would not, he would not have even been an option, to be honest. And that wasn't your choice. Yes. But you were, you were not even my choice. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> no, 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 no. Be because, because she's trying... She's trying to be diplomatic. Tell the world I wasn't your choice. Because as at that time, my wife would say, I like a guy that has pink lips. Because she was my friend. We never knew we were going to get married. So I knew her choice. Pink lips. It must be fair. And one of her criteria was that the guy should be speaking for now. Not this Edo English I'm speaking. Hey, Del, how are you doing? Hope you're good. You know, that was a speck. But when you are following Jesus, I am. when you are following Jesus, people like us become qualified. Because God will tell you, follow me. Let me show you. It's not by pink lips. So. It's not because he is fair. The thought I have for you are the thought of good. And not of you. To bring you to an expected. Not unexpected. Some of you, you have followed shape. You have entered unexpected end. You will see shape on the bed. Come and sleep now. You can't, your heart is beating. You can't make love again. It's an unexpected end. Because with shape, you are in problem. No peace. Unexpected end. The thought I have for you are the thought of good. To bring you what? To an expected end. Yeah, very true. And the beautiful thing about God, like my husband said, when you follow God, it doesn't end in just giving you the speck. It gives you what's spectacular for your destiny. Aye, aye. Because the truth is, the truth is, listen, the truth is, it's not about the marriage. It's about the destiny has given to you. Yeah. Many times, people have just watched for the show without the following. And they have ended up aborting, feeling unfulfilled in marriage. Mm. Marriage is purpose. Marriage is about partnership to fulfill a purpose. So I beg you, if you're in a relationship with someone, prevention is always better than cure. And you know right there that this person you are in a relationship with, the things that God has shown you, this person is not fit into the journey of life. Please, 
don't settle for spec settle for spectacular Aya. I'm telling you like we're saying it looked like a joke I wasn't my husband's choice and it wasn't my choice but like we have said many times in meetings it took partnership agreement for both of us to marry before a win loss was betted yeah he says follow me he says he says um to an expected empty. What's the scripture again? Sorry, from the beginning. Uh, which, the thought Sorry, of towards the thoughts you. I have towards you are the thoughts of good and of evil, and not of evil. Thank you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. <laughs> so there is first an expected before the end. <laughs> now, when you walk with God, knowing that the thoughts he has for us are of peace and not of evil when you walk with him the expectations are quality may not be quantity Kaya. and when he gives you those kind of things it brings you peace listen there is nothing like a fulfilled spouse there's something about a fulfilled purpose mm. if you have a spouse and nothing is being fulfilled or fulfilling in your life you'll be frustrated that's true it's just like when Ocholi was answering a question. If you board a bus and you don't know the expected end, you'll be quarreling with the driver. That's true. But when you follow him and allow him choose the gear of the car, and all you do is just sit beside and allow him drive you, the hmm. truth is the end, the expected is quality. <laughs> then it may not be many, it's just that one tool he will give to you. Hmm. But you see, you need to follow him, allow him drive you so that there can be a partnership to the fulfillment of a destiny mm. he would never have been my choice ne as in nothing even you <laughs> because i want her to marry a lady that has front and back he said it <laughs> it's okay it's if okay you... it's okay time up if time you... up <laughs> it, <it's... laughs> time is, up. is it not my time <laughs> It's not now that she has shape. Oh. If you see when I met my wife, that time we were going in Asaba, you know, there's this wind. When the wind is, I need to hold that tie because wind can take her away. She was flat like ruler. <laughs> oh, <totally liposal. laughs> Amen. But God said what? Follow and I will show you. If my aim in life was what to touch, touch. By now, that I would have stopped touching. I have touched out of purpose. Touched <laughs> out of purpose. But the Bible says in this time, it makes things beautiful. beautiful. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. Hebrews 11 verse 8. The Bible says, by faith, Abraham obeyed. Hebrews 11 verse 8. 8, not 38. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Your problem is that you know too much. Not knowing. Because God was the driver. Not you, you know too much. Who do you have to marry? You know. You talk before God told you have talk. Yeah, your prayer, you are even God say, Come down, let me ah, God, he has to be tall, he has to be rich, he must be from Lecky, he must be this, he must be that. Da, 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 not knowing where he was going. See, if you are a Christian, you are not yet looked at like a fool, you have not started working with God. They looked at my wife, they called her a fool. My mom called her and said, Hey, is you who is you want to marry? Who is? Is this not the boy that will carry a laptop in Asaba? You'll be trekking around your this boy you want to marry. She was looked like a fool. A pastor called her and said, Who is? I know who is. I can vouch that that boy is a church rat. He doesn't have where he's going to a life. See, I if I be a man of God, he told my wife, he started recommending for my wife. 
but you listen you see when you walk with god before you can receive the inheritance he went with god not knowing you know too much because you know too much that's why you don't even pray check a man who a christian that don't pray because you know too much if you do not know you will break down god help me god help me god help me god you you know too much you still using your mouth to be kissing up and down and yet it will break your heart because you know too much true you look at shape too much it will still break your heart because you know too much true and this is not even about relationship alone even in marriage mm. listen you don't follow god in relationship and end there in marriage if what you followed whatever you follow is what will be your guided your your government what will control you for example if you was spec you followed to marry the person <laughs> you will do breast surgery yeah he will tell you, wake up tomorrow, your hip is down. He yes. say, do even if you have given birth. You know, he will, the, you will be forcing each other mm. to maintain a speck. Mm. You become, there's nothing wrong with exercising, keeping yeah. fit, doing all that. But listen, when you follow speck, <laughs> you will become more conscious of maintaining the speck than maintaining your relationship with God. True. And it says in Galatians 5, 6, it says, Submitting ye one to, to another. another. Those that walk with God, walk in the Spirit, mm. shall exhibit the fruits, mm. not flesh. So in other words, when you become more conscious of walking with speck, because you followed speck, it's what you follow that will guide you. So if you follow speck, you begin to become so much conscious of maintaining the speck that maintain your relationship with God, that you will begin to exhibit the fruits of flesh, not fruits of spirits. Not fruits of the Holy Spirit, but fruits of the flesh. So anger becomes the order of the day in your marriage. Unforgiveness becomes the order of the day. Frustration becomes the order of the day. But when you follow the one that knows the end from the beginning, because specs knows the beginning but does not know the end. But when you follow the one that knows the end from the beginning, <laughs> all knowing, you are guided 100%. <laughs> you know too much. That is why you have not gotten that spouse. I can vouch, I can tell you the truth. We are 10 years in marriage. We have counseled people. We have joined couples. We have joined couples that married lasted two weeks. Some three months. Some a lifetime. So from experience, I can tell that the reason why their marriage is failed was because they know scripture said we know not what to pray for as we ought to but it is the spirit that makes intercession groanings that cannot be uttered when you can utter your prayer ah, you are praying in flesh because you know God this man that I want to marry so this equity man ah, you know he will leave you he will leave you. Even if you are in a relationship with the person already, enter into the throne room, not knowing. God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know my next move. I don't know how I'm going to get married. My mom said, how are you people going to get married? I said, mommy, I don't know. But God said, in five months, I will marry. She laughed because it was coming from the flesh. But by the Spirit, we did not know. So every time we go to God, go and be praying, la, 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 building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We're building something, building something, building something. And God began to orchestrate our steps and brought us to this point now, 10 years after living in so much peace. You know too much. That is why you are not getting the right results. You know the problem of your husband. That is why God has not changed your husband. You know, before you know, you have got to call, hey, my husband is a drunk, he's this, he's that. You are complaining to everybody because you know God will not change the person. But when you go to God, God, I don't know what is wrong with my husband. I don't know what to pray for as I ought to. And you realize that God will begin to change the man. 
and one day the man will become a good man we don't know i don't know that is how i want to enter the throne room today not knowing anything see drop your if you came here with uh, pictures say as is, actually is praying i have options option a option b i will lift it up to this thing you know some of you you know you carry pictures prophet prophesy tell me the one tell me the, you know you know you know you know you are coming to god today say god i don't know you know not what we should pray for as we ought to it is the spirit that makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost.